A long time ago in Persia, there lived an old man and an old woman, and they were very happy except for one thing. They had never been blessed with a child. More than anything else in the world, they wanted a child, but they had never been blessed. One night, it was a very dark and stormy night, there came a knock at the door, and they wondered who could be out on such a terribly cold, stormy night. They opened the door and they found an old man, and he was very cold and he was very hungry. They took him in, they gave him food, and they gave him a warm place to sleep. And in the morning, the old man said to the couple, he said, you know, I know what it is you want more than anything else in the world, and I have good news. In one year's time, you will have a child. Name him Dodge and Teague, and when he grows up, give him these two gifts from myself. But beware, for the day he receives these gifts is the day he will leave on a very dangerous journey, and I don't know if he will ever return safely. Now, the old couple thought this was very strange. They took the two gifts and they put them away. But sure enough, in one year's time, they had a child. They named him Dodge and Teague, and he grew up to be a fine young man. He was so kind to his parents, but there was always one room of the house that was locked. One day, he found the secret key. He opened the door, and inside there were these two packages. In the first package, when he opened it up, he pulled out a magnificent sword. It was so finely wrought, it felt like it had been built for his hand. And in the second package, there was a picture of the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. And immediately, he fell in love. He thought, I must find this girl. I want to marry her. His parents warned him that the journey would be very dangerous. But Dodge and Teague was determined, and in the end, he left with their blessing. Now, he had many adventures. He traveled far and wide, and in his journey, he came across two companions. One was the son of a soldier, and one was the son of a baker. One day, the three of them were traveling. They came to a village, and something very strange was happening. It was the middle of the day, noontime. They were hungry. They wanted to buy some food in the marketplace. But all of the stall owners, they were closing up their shops, and they were running away. Dodge and Teague said, where are you going? It's the middle of the day. We want to buy some food from you. And the shop owners, they said, you'd better run too. Every day at noontime, there come two monster serpents and they carry away anyone they can find. You'd better run away and hide. Dodge and Teague pulled out his sword. And he said, I don't run from anyone. Let those monster serpents come. I am ready. When the monster serpents arrived, they were monstrously huge. There was a fierce battle. The dust flew. Nobody could tell who was winning. But when the dust finally settled, the monster serpents lay dead on the ground. And Dodge and Teague stood victorious with his sword held high. All the people in the village, they cheered. They poured out of their homes and they said, Yay, Dodge and Teague, you have saved us from those terrible monster serpents. And the richest man in the village came forward. And he said, Dodge and Teague, my son, for what you have done, I will allow you to marry my daughter, and I will give you half of everything that I own. Now, the girl was very pretty, but Dodge and Teague's heart belonged to the girl in the picture, and he said, I'm sorry, but I cannot marry your daughter. My heart belongs to another, but I think my friend, the soldier's son, looks interested. And sure enough, the girl liked the soldier's son better anyways. And the two of them, they got married. And the next day, Dodge and Teague left with the baker's son to go and continue to look for the girl in the picture. They traveled very, very far, and they still had no luck. But finally, one day, they came to another village where something very strange was happening. There was a procession coming down the road. And at the head of the procession was a very beautiful but very sad girl. And all the people that lined the road, they were all crying. And Dodge and Teague, when he went up to one of them, he said, what's going on? Why is everybody so sad? And the man said, oh, this is a very sad day. Today is the day, once a week, the dragon arrives and we draw lots to see who will sacrifice themselves so the dragon doesn't eat all of us. And today, the lot has fallen to the mayor's daughter. Oh, she's such a nice girl. We'll really miss her. And Dodge and Teague, he pulled out his sword and he said, dry your eyes. For if I am able, there will be no sacrifice today. 
nor ever again. He went out in front of the field, in front of the village, and he waited for the dragon to arrive. And pretty soon, the sky grew dark, but it was not clouds. The dragon's wings were blocking the sunlight from the sun. He looked up, and there was the dragon. It was huge. And inside his heart, he was a little bit afraid. He was not sure that he could conquer this dragon. There was a fierce battle. The dust flew. Nobody could tell who was winning. But when the dust settled, the dragon lay dead. And Dodge and Teague stood victorious, his sword held high. And all the people streamed out of the village, cheering, Yay, Dodge and Teague, you have saved us from that terrible dragon. And the mayor himself, whose daughter was saved, came to Dodge and Teague. He said, my son, for what you have done, I will allow you to marry my daughter, and I will give you half of everything that I own. Now, the girl was very pretty, but Dodge and Teague's heart belonged to the girl in the picture. And he said, I'm sorry, your daughter's lovely, but my heart belongs to another. But I think my friend, the baker's son, interest, it looks interested. And sure enough, the girl liked him better anyways. The two of them were married. That night there was a big feast, a huge festival, as they all celebrated the, the conquering of the dragon. Everybody was very happy, but Dodge and Teak was sitting very quietly in a corner. And the mayor saw him sitting very quietly. He said, he said to Dodge and Teak, he said, Dodge and Teak, my son, why are you so sad? It is a happy day. Dodge and Teak said, no, I am happy for my friend. He has found his true love, but I have not found mine yet. And the man said, well, let me take a look at that picture. And when Dodge and Teague showed it to him, he said, you know, I think I know who this girl is. And Dodge and Teague said, you do? Please tell me. I have been searching for a long time for her. And the mayor said, you know, I think this is the princess Mahmansur. She lives in a village on the other side of those mountains. There's a palace. She lives in the palace in that village. And Dodge and Teague, he was overjoyed. The next morning, he got up very early, and he traveled across those mountains. He came to the village of the Princess Mahmansur, and there he found the palace of the Princess Mahmansur. And it, in front of the palace, there was a long line of men. Dodge and Teague came to the last guy in line. He said, my name is Dodge and Teague. I have traveled very far to come and ask for the Princess Mahmansur's hand in marriage. I have killed two monster serpents and a dragon to come and ask for her hand in marriage. And the last guy in line, he said, well, yeah, buddy, we killed things too. Get at the back of the line. We all want to marry the princess too. One by one. The men went into the palace of the Princess Mahmansur, and one by one, they all came out carrying a tiny little packet in their hands. Finally, it was Dodge and Teague's turn. He came before the princess, and she was even more beautiful than in the picture. He said, Princess Mahmansur, I have traveled many, many leagues to come here and ask for your hand in marriage. I have killed two monster serpents and a dragon, and I have saved people all, and I've wanted to come and ask for your hand in marriage. And the Princess Mahmansur, she said, that's very nice. But I have vowed that I will only marry the man who pleases me. And Dodge and Teague said, well, what should I do to please you? Do you want me to fight like a giant or something? And the Princess Mahmansur said, no, uh, that's not necessary. Take this packet of seeds. Take it home for one month's time. After one month, bring me what you have grown with it. If it pleases me, I will marry you. And Dodge and Teague said, that's it? You want me to grow these seeds? She said, yes, that's it. If it pleases me, I will marry you. So Dodge and Teague took the seeds, and he went to the marketplace, and he bought the best soil that money could buy and a nice pot to put it in. He planted the seeds very carefully. He watered the seeds very carefully. But at the end of the month, there was still nothing growing in the pot. The time was up. He had to go back to the Princess Mahmansur, but how could he carry an empty pot of dirt? But still, he had come this far. He might as well finish the journey. So he carried his empty pot through the village, and he went through the marketplace, and for sale, he saw the most beautiful plants in the marketplace. And for a moment, he thought, what if I bought one of those? 
and said, that's what I grew. And he thought, no, that wouldn't be honest. Let me get this over with. So he walked to the palace of the Princess Mahmansur, and there his courage almost failed him. For every man in line and before him had a more beautiful plant than the one in front. One by one, they went into the palace of the Princess Mahmansur, and one by one, they all came out rejected. Finally, it was Dajantik's turn. He did not have the heart to look up at the princess. He just held out his empty pot of dirt, and he waited for her to tell him to go home. He waited, and he waited, and finally, he couldn't stand it any longer, so he looked up, and he saw that the princess Mahmansur was smiling. She said, Dodge and Teague, you have pleased me. I will marry you. And he said, you will? But I wasn't able to grow anything. And the princess Mahmansur, she smiled, and she said, you know, those packets of seeds that I handed out, before I put the seeds in the packet, I boiled them. They were dead. They could not grow anything. You are the only man who was courageous enough and honest enough to bring me exactly what the, the seeds could grow, which was nothing. For that, and for some other reasons, I will marry you. And the two of them, they got married, and they lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs>